All right, I think I'm feeling safe and secure in my jump seat, so I reckon I'm just about ready for a tsunami. Here we go. If a mega tsunami happens, it's going to impact all the coast of the Atlantic, from Brazil to Nova Scotia to England and to Morocco. On the day after Christmas in 2004, just before 8 o'clock in the morning, an earthquake shook the ocean floor off the coast of Indonesia with the strength of 23,000 Nagasaki bombs. That's a big wave. The force lifted the floor several metres, setting off a massive tsunami that would kill close to a quarter of a million people. Less than seven years later, another magnitude 9 earthquake. This one struck off the coast of Japan and caused a tsunami that killed 18,000 people and led to the meltdown of the Fukushima reactor. We won't be able to stop the next tsunami, but could technology help us survive? I've travelled to the outskirts of Santa Cruz, a few miles from the San Andreas Fault, to meet with Stephen Ward. He knows about as much as you can know about tsunamis. He spent his research career studying tsunamis and simulating them, pixel by pixel, on his computer screen. After a few minutes with Ward, one thing was clear. When a massive earthquake hits, you do not want to be near the water. A typical wave at the beach might go 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour. A tsunami wave in the middle of the ocean goes 500 miles an hour, speed of the jet. We all know that earthquakes are caused by the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates. The quakes that cause tsunamis are called subduction earthquakes, when one plate slides under another and displaces everything above it. Those subduction zones are near places like the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, Japan and Indonesia. When those plates shift, the water above it moves too, and that's when a tsunami causes real devastation. I always like to imagine like a, uh, a giant out in the ocean. He grabs the seafloor and lifts the seafloor up and holds it there. And all the water just slides in for 10 or 15 minutes. Then the giant lets go and it all slides back out again. So all that motion in and out is going to drag people and uh, carry them out to sea. The key to survival is getting early warning that an earthquake has hit and that a tsunami could be coming. By tracking seismic waves, seismologists can analyse the earthquake's magnitude and motion to see if it's likely to cause a tsunami. They say if it's, if it's long and strong, be gone. So if you start shaking and the minute it stops, you've got about 10 minutes to you know, follow the signs and uh, get uphill. I can't make a cup of tea in less than 10 minutes. I need way more time than that. Luckily, scientists like Ward can use computer simulations to predict when and how tsunamis will hit. But I have bad news for you. Earthquakes aren't the only thing that can cause tsunamis. If you have a giant collapse of a volcano, you can make a tsunami 500 feet high, 1,000 feet high. Let's talk mega tsunamis. Ward says there have been dozens of huge landslides off the Hawaiian coast over the last 20 million years big enough to trigger a mega tsunami. These are 500 cubic miles. It's like this county of Santa Cruz falling into the ocean. And you can imagine if such a thing happens, it's going to push water thousands of feet high. But what causes the worst mega tsunamis? Asteroids come in at uh, 50 miles per second and they can be as big as a house or you know, big as a couple of acres in grass. And they're gonna blow a hole in the ocean all the way to the seafloor and uh, 50 miles wide. If a mega tsunami happens, it's gonna impact all the coast of the Atlantic, from Brazil to Nova Scotia to England and to Morocco. So what do you do when a tsunami hits and there's no escape? 
Well, I headed out to Seattle's Puget Sound to test one high-tech option that might just be crazy enough to work. I had no idea what I was signing up for. Meet the survival capsule. It might look like something from a spy movie, but it's actually meant to protect you, your family, and even your pets from the impacts of a tsunami. It's the brainchild of Julian Sharp, an engineer with almost 30 years of experience in the aerospace industry. Back in 2010, he was on a family vacation at the beach when he started to think about the Indonesian tsunami. I was lying there at night time listening to the, the waves and I was thinking, well, what happens if a tsunami comes in now? That got Sharp thinking about how to survive something that powerful. And the answer was an escape pod designed to aerospace standards that could survive a tsunami and all the debris and sharp impacts that come with it. It consists of a tubular aluminum frame over which we bring uh, two aluminum hemispheres and uh, weld it all together. We have Lexan glass, which is uh, super high strength and has thermal resilience. That frame, it's designed to help the pod absorb impacts from the outside. And there's a silver lining on the inside, the same thermal material that was used on the space shuttle to prevent it overheating during re-entry. To see just how much it can handle, Sharp and his team put the capsule through the ultimate drop test, sending it off the top of the Palouse Falls in Washington, a massive 200-foot drop. While you might not face 200-foot waves in a tsunami, Sharp wanted to find out whether his creation could survive those extreme forces. Hey, let's go, balls away. Oh yes, there it goes, it's going in the back spot we wanted to. But waterfall or no waterfall, a controlled test is very different to a real life tsunami. There's no crew in a safety boat to reel you in if you get caught in a natural disaster. Which leads me to the question that has been bugging me all morning. How does someone find me again? Am I just stuck bobbing out in the ocean for the rest of my life? We, we recommend you install a GPS system. So if she was to go out to sea, um, the beacon would go off and everybody would know where she was. The capsule can also be tethered to a point on shore so you can be pulled in. And if all else fails and there's no Coast Guard to rescue you or no one to reel you in, there's one other option. If you have to, if you can't open the door, you can pull the pins and the drawer will drop, drawer will drop down and you can scramble out. It's very, very simple. It doesn't require any high technology. And I guess the last question, how much are these gonna, one of these going to cost me? Well, um, right now, if you order one from me, this one will cost $15,000 to build. All right, well, I think all that's left for me to do is to try it out. Yeah, very good. I've got my walkie-talkie. I've got my uh, fellow passenger, which is a bag of ballast. And I'm in my jump seat, nice and secure. I feel like I'm ready to face a tsunami. Let's see how I go. As they lowered the capsule into the water, I started to have massive second thoughts about volunteering for this. I'd had nightmares about being left in the middle of the ocean. And even though I'd taken enough seasickness medication to knock out an elephant, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive the waves, but we just had to put it to the test. Bring it on, over. And while I sat inside my own personal nightmare, the rest of our crew sat on a boat doing donuts around me in the harbour. Get me wrong, these waves aren't anything like what I'd expect in a real tsunami. But still, I was getting knocked around a lot inside that little orange ball. I started to get a real sense of what it might be like to be at the mercy of the ocean. I think 
I'm okay. I made it. The survival capsule team has built this two-person prototype which they say is close to going into production. And Sharp says it could be a life-saving option for people in remote areas, people who can't get to an evacuation point, or those who might not have the time. And sure, I didn't experience the real deal, surviving a magnitude 9 earthquake, packing up all my supplies and getting to my capsule in less than 10 minutes. Not to mention the full-size waves that come with a tsunami. A $15,000 tsunami escape capsule might not be the solution for everyone. But still, being inside here felt a lot safer than being in the middle of the ocean without any protection. When a world-shaking tsunami eventually does hit, it probably won't feel like a Disneyland ride. But with a bit of advanced engineering, we might just have a solution to get us out alive. Ready for so much more. You can give me all you got. Over. <laughs> <laughs>